Airports are undoubtedly an integral part of the aviation ecosystem. However, the entire global aviation industry is currently facing a crisis thanks to the novel COVID-19 pandemic. The industry wasn't ready or financially set up to experience such a sudden and prolonged decline in traffic levels. Hi, welcome to the Wealth Lab and thanks for checking in. Airports are an integral part of the aviation ecosystem. During the pre-COVID-19 times, when we all were accustomed to business as usual, the multiplier effect and positive externalities generated by airports in terms of employment and contribution to the regional economy were high. Tourism, commerce, and an intricate supply chain of small to medium and large businesses relied on passenger and cargo traffic within this ecosystem and beyond. However, the travel restrictions introduced to respond to the pandemic and ongoing quarantine measures deemed a viable alternative than harmonized testing or screening of passengers reversed the economic multiplier effect, which resulted in devastating job loss and income deterioration. Enjoying the video? Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks! We cannot overlook that airports are potent engines of socio-economic growth and indispensable to the communities and domestic market. Which brings us to the main agenda of today's video. How airports make money. Has this thought ever crossed your mind that airports may be working at a loss even though the daily traffic that passes through them is gradually increasing? Let's find out the economics behind airports. There are two types of air facilities, those run by commercial companies and those run and supported by the government. The government-owned airports operate with minimum or no profit at all. In previous times, airports were not managed but administered to serve state-owned airlines. When market agility increased with airline liberalization in 1978, starting from the USA, Airports evolved from being inevitable aviation infrastructure to business-oriented and outward-facing service providers. So, airports started chasing airlines to increase their business, and competition between mega-hubs started, each trying to become the ideal gateway to the maximum number of continents. Airlines and operations management concepts underwent a drastic shift, which impacted the way airports were and are run. There was a considerable change in the distribution and volume of traffic, which profoundly impacted the industry. Before the mid-1980s, almost all international airports were owned and operated by the state and were deemed facilities that benefited state-run airlines. This mechanism was reflected in the underlying economics of this relationship. In 1986, the British Airports Authority got privatized, marking a watershed in airport development. It was then that the true potential of airports as revenue-generating entities was discovered. Since then, the global airport sector has become increasingly commercialized and airports create more value through economic cycles than the airlines. Today, most of the world's mainstream airports are owned by regional, domestic, or national government institutions. They then lease them to private corporations. These corporations oversee the overall airport operations. Recently, private firms have started bidding for managing the airports. Some of the world's largest airports include the mighty Dubai International Airport, which is the best example of government-run airport. The JFK Airport is owned by the City of New York while it is operated by the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Singapore's Changi Airport is owned by the country's government but operated by Changi Airport Group. Private sector involvement in airports was encouraged through outright ownership, commercial management contracts, or long-term leases. The need to allow airports to market themselves efficiently, airport ownership and airline liberalization, congestion, growth, and investment needs are all tied together. So, when we think about how much money do airports make, it isn't easy to answer this question. Many diverse factors impact airport revenue from passenger flow to airport size, airline routes, global economic trends, type of plane services, and the local and regional regulations. In March 2019, 
the global airport revenues accounted for 172.2 billion U.S. dollars, marking a 6.2 percent increase from the previous year. After the pandemic, global airport revenue dropped by 97 billion U.S. dollars in 2020. This shows how ongoing events can impact the airport's revenue-generating capabilities. Enjoying the video? Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks! There are two primary revenue sources for airports, aeronautical revenue and non-aeronautical revenue. Around 56% of all revenue that airports generate is aeronautical revenue, including the terminal, landing, and passenger fees that airlines pay. For your information, airports charge landing fees per aircraft for landing it in the airport premises. The fees are calculated through the weight and size of the aircraft that's due to land. So, the fees vary greatly. To resolve this issue, many airports offer a fixed rate for an average rate or charge more for extra weight. Passenger service fees involve the per-passenger charges. These are charges for the facilities like water, food, and Wi-Fi used on the flight. When you buy an airline ticket, the services you have to pay for will be mentioned on it. Another primary revenue source for airports is the aircraft parking area. Aircraft are parked for a predetermined time and amount before or after takeoff. Every airport has its specific parking tariff. For instance, JFK Airport charges $45 per hour for a 100,000 pounds plane. This rate increases with the weight. About 40% of airport revenue is from non-aeronautical sources. It is well documented that happy passenger will be a returning passenger. So, the airport's non-aeronautical revenue relies more on the quality of services offered to passengers and the kind of experience they receive. This domain includes things that do not revolve around aircraft operations, such as the airport's ambience, hygiene conditions, retail outlets or gift shops, concession sales, rental car operations, in-airport advertising, parking facilities, etc. It is important to note that concession revenue boasts a significant chunk of non-aeronautical revenue, which the airport usually makes through bookstores, duty-free shops, money exchanges, and restaurants or cafes. The second major source of non-aeronautical revenue is the car parking spot for passengers. So we can say that airports make 40% of their revenue through commercial activities, and the biggest chunk of the pie belongs to airlines and aircraft-related charges. Now it is essential to understand does airport ownership matter in this context? Nowadays, there are privately owned and government-owned airports. In both cases, these are now operated as businesses and are required to generate money. So when it comes to revenue generation, it is of little to no importance who owns it. What matters more is their size, traffic, and commercial activities. Many small government-owned airports charge comparatively lower fees to attract airlines. In comparison, bigger airports like Heathrow earn more than a few small airports collectively do. An airport with less than 1 million passengers in a year will make a lesser profit than international operators. When discussing the economics behind airports, how can we forget the passenger aspect? Do airports make money from passengers? Definitely, they do. Enjoying the video? Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks! Despite cargo flights and cargo airports availability, a considerable chunk of airport revenues come from passengers on commercial flights. Let's understand this aspect with the example of London Heathrow Airport. It is the world's busiest airport and it is entirely privately owned. On average, Heathrow Airport serves 650 flights per day, which means 78 million passengers fly through this airport annually. It costs nearly half a billion dollars to run Heathrow Airport, so it needs to generate $19 per passenger to break even. Wondering how it does it? Well, Heathrow receives a cut of each sale made by the many retailers operating within its territory. Restaurants pay the airport $0.95 per passenger. Parking lot operators pay $2.03 per passenger, while retail shops pay $5.15.
VIP lounges and car rentals pay the airport authorities $3.04. An express train operated by the airport provides $2.15 per passenger. So, the airport receives $13.32 from these services. Please note that this is among the highest per passenger retail revenues in the world. In contrast, Washington Dulles Airport receives $5.68 per passenger, whereas Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport earns $10.92 per passenger. Singapore Changi Airport was named the best airport globally in 2017 with around $480 million in profit. But even that doesn't make $19 per passenger. So, what about the rest of the $19? It comes from flights. So taking the example of Heathrow Airport forward, here's how much money it makes through flights. Heathrow makes money every time a plane takes off or lands from its premises. On average, it costs $9,500 to land each plane. Though this varies with the plane's size and weight, the charges include the use of the runway, gate space, and check-in area. A small 76-passenger Bombardier Dash 8 will pay the airport $999, whereas a Boeing 747 operator will pay $11,600. The smaller Dash 8 flying on a domestic route will pay $2,400 for both arrival and departure, and the 747 flying on a long-haul route will pay $31,700 to the airport. The bottom line is that the airport receives around $29 per passenger ticket. Now add it to the $13.32 retail value, and you get a higher amount than the $19 the airport needs to break even. That's all about how airports make money. Do you have something to add? Please share your opinions in the comments section and see you in the next video.